both post seasons, uh -huh. both EU and NA, we get pentakills. I like that. It's like now that it, now that it's really on the line. Okay, I'll guess I'll kill all five people now. And Bjergsen actually had to work for his. So yeah. It wasn't just. So did Genja. It was. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't like AD carries, so I'm like, oh, wow. AD carries, they just auto attack at the back and they happen to get last hits. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry you guys get solo XP and get, actually get to be over leveled on people. All right, so they are going to go with the Lulu. And it will probably be Boy Boy Lulu. So they are going to go back with the same strategy here Mundo Lulu once again into the Jacks and Karma this time around. Okay, so Curse looking at a very similar team composition to themselves. I really think Morgana pulled so much weight for Cloud9 last game. Mm -hmm. With that being removed, C9 needs a new backup plan then when they get jumped on by the TP Mundo. Those fights likely would have worked. Well, they could maybe off into the same matchups though. Yeah. If it is Karma, the speed boost is it's not really the same type of answer. It's the more turn your turn your tail and run mm -hmm. type of answer, not really the engage that Morgana brings. It's not uh, stun their team for two seconds. But really, Cloud9's comp this time around is shaping up to be that split push, and they're like, oh yeah, we have Jax for split pushing and our Karma to speed boost the four-man squad that is without Jax, so we can at least run away until he either teleports in or he gains some advantage on a different lane. Yeah, so they've added a fair bit of wave clear, one of the best wave clear junglers in uh, the common pool here. Elise comes through with Spiderlings. Graves also for Sneaky. On top of that Karma, whether it's mid or support, we still don't quite know yet. I figure Lulu's already grabbed, so maybe maybe more wave clear comes in. Maybe it's overkill. We'll see what High gets with his last pick. Curse have to make sure they dedicate this Lulu to mid or support with this one. I like Medios going back to this Elise. So good against Mundo, and everybody really enjoying his build. Definitely innovating and taking the changes in stride. Still standing by his favorite champion. This time around, though, they're the ones with the graves. Yeah. So they have the, the higher wave clear in the burst. I guess Lucian's got just as good wave clears. He's, it's not higher. Never mind. Yeah, it, it's it's good overall, but Curse actually switching it around. It is going to be support Lulu because Yasuo gets grabbed in here for Voi Boy. And once again, I will dominate. Does play Sin Zhao. So interesting. So they can get knockups with either Lulu ulti or Shin Sao displacement. Um, but boy, boy, if you do it on the Shin Sao displacement, then you have to do it very quickly. Mm -hmm. And you usually only get one person then. So it's not the same type of uh, combo that you know, something like a Wukong would bring to that. Yeah, if you get if you get it perfect, like we did see one five-man Shin Sao. You do it super quick. Yeah, where they're still in the area that they'll all yeah. get grabbed. It'll stop from going outwards, so you'll have them like, all in a little ball. You can like Lulu them afterwards. Just saying theoretically possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're we'll very see. quick, they can they can pull that one off. If they're crazy. However, but. Cloud9 are a team that I always point out, they're really good at team fighting against AoE teams because mm -hmm. they spread out so effectively. They kite so effectively, and then they're able to turn the switch where they focus down whichever target is out of position. So they kite you for just long enough, then when they have the positioning, they can easily turn it around and their focus fire is amazing. Yeah, they are absolutely so. Cloud9 do lock in. Couple of the same picks for this one. The comps are all together. C9 gonna have to worry about some AoE, worry about a little bit of the engage, but they've got a split push Jax. And by the way, Jax, to my knowledge, crushes Yasuo 1v1 as well. So it's gotta be Quas who holds up to that champion. And Curse are not going to be looking to play the spread out game. They don't want to get picked off. They don't want to get split pushed on. They want that team fight. They're going hard engage mm -hmm. into uh, the LeBlanc Elise combo here. They're going to try and catch them and make Cloud9 pay for going with this split push Jax. Well, we'll see if Curse can make it happen. Guys, the champions are locked in and loading. Now's the time to send us your predictions on who is going to win this game. All right, so just tweet your vote at LOL Esports and use the hashtag CRSWIN or C9WIN. And then periodically, we will be checking to uh, see where the votes stand. Yeah, my guess it's going to start out with a Cloud9 lead, but I mean, Curse did hold the first 20 minutes in a good spot in this first game. I want to see if they can do that again, get themselves in a better spot, pull us to a game three. We'll see what happens. Loading up into the game, Cloud9 one win away from facing TSM in the finals tomorrow. And that's what the sights are. All right, well, I'm also going to be looking at the teleports too. Um, because some people have been teleporting to dying turrets. You, once you make that mistake, though, you never make that mistake again. Never? Well, you never want to make that mistake. You try again. not to. <laughs> I guess you try not to make it in the first place, too, freak. <laughs>
Just saying. I feel like if you've been playing the game for this long, you've done that once before. Well, how about I put it this way? Don't make that mistake. Got it. Don't Kobe, teleport to a dying turret. Lesson learned, good Especially sir. Especially if your inhibitor relies on it. Yes. Here we go, guys. Curse are in the game. Looking to come back for game two and game three to win this series. Right now, it looks like a defensive posture on both sides. High and Lemonation going to make their way down there. I really am curious how Bunny Fufu will perform on this Lulu. As we said, there were target bans at him, so many support bans, and he has gone with the Lulu pick that's generally given over to Voiboy. As you said, if Voiboy you know, wanted to take that Lulu, he would have had to gone to number six or something yep. in his line of priority line of supports. However, it's fine in the two versus one swaps because they could both start with the Spell Thieves and they both get that extra damage, they both get that guaranteed gold income. This time lining up though, is the old style lineup here, the line of scrimmage. So it looks like if they don't do an, a late invade, mm -hmm. then it will be normal lanes here. However, a lot of people, you know, wait until the last second to put the late in there, late invade. Uh, we'll see, it wouldn't be late invade unless it was farther on down. Void, we're going to still stay in the mid lane. High going to do the same. Looks like the line of scrimmage is going to get broken, and we're now into the match. All right, so probably the swap here from Cloud9. Invade blue, swip, swatch their uh, AD and support up to top. Probably we'll see the first five minutes play out very similar to the last game. The only thing here is that Quas has actually been cut off from the way that these early games normally play out. Yeah. He's now on the wrong side. Lands some harass on Sneaky. He's going to throw some cleavers in. Media's not the happiest man about that. Going to share XP with Balls, though. Curse actually a bit slower on their rotation around, but Bunny Fufu is helping out will dominate. Yeah, let's see if this actually costs Curse, because they are going to be slower in the swap. However, they're trying to take down the weaker turret. Mundo will not be able to get an early level 2 to join them. Looks like he is going to try and help out with the red buff, though. So that's a large chunk of experience. Meanwhile, Cloud9 go with the early. Uh, one buff into two camps, so everybody's level two. Perfect timing there. They rush down that early turret. And we'll see if Curse can actually catch up. I'm going to go on the second wave. Quas still level one with this one. He's very low on health. That will, I will dominate already level two. Quas going to join up with the roster. So C9 going to get a very early push lead. And I do want to see it. We've seen a couple of games, actually, in the playoffs go two to one on turrets or three to two on turrets. Curse has fallen victim to that before. It could very well be the case. Elise is amazing at shoving turrets, going into spider form with her spider lings as well as her attack speed buff. Shin Sao is very strong as well, but again, they are delayed almost a full turret here. Actually, a full turret. Yep. They're down a full turret. Three minutes, 15 in, and Curse are just starting now. Bottom tier one turret. They waited an extra wave, basically. The Cloud9 already on their way down the cannon wave right now with them. Let's look at the mid lane, though. Uh, Voiboy was able to get a lead and then shove. He backed pretty early, and now he's making his way to try and stop at the inhibitor turret while the rest of the team continues. This is something we haven't really seen before. Little adaptation. Actually sending mid laner to try and hold the inhibitor turret and keeping the push going. This might be what Curse need to catch back up from a full turret deficit. Or it could be a fatal flaw. If Voiboy gets caught there, Balls is level two. If he has Leap Strike stun, nope, they're gonna back off. They completely give the room to Voi. Let's see how much work they can get done mid though, since they did have to use their mid laner. Uh, and High actually doesn't hard shove it. Uh, Balls actually TPs to this turret right here, and he's gonna hold up some of the XP. This turret still up to one third HP. Cloud9 do hold the turret lead anyway. So, Quas being Duck on the wrong side of the map for the opening level one. Really hurting Curse. Down one global objective. See if that actually translates into any team fight power because unless you go back and buy, it means nothing. And even if you do go back and buy this early in the game, it's rarely a full item of combat effectiveness. So it should not hurt Curse too badly for the next couple minutes, but we'll see how they can play this out. There's actually one thing that uh, struck me as interesting, actually. I remember during the post-game interviews with Dominate, he was talking about how when they were fighting Dignitas, Dignitas did this two-man, take the buff, take two camps, shove the second wave, level one, and that curse was like, okay, yeah, well, we can mirror that and hold up. Mm -hmm. Now, the question to me is, if the optimal play to that strategy is to just do the same strategy, 
that's just the optimal strategy. And Curse went back to doing their two camp really slow push and once again got down a turret there. It's really weird they didn't just take that in this game as well. So there is that random factor where you are never 100% sure what to expect. Sure. Because there's no vision, Qua stayed over by the blue buff, and him being on the wrong side did cost them those few seconds. Um, so kind of give and take there. It's very hard because there's no trinket wards being able to put down. You have no vision. That's why a lot of these teams are uh, just going with the safest possible starting uh, strategy. Yeah. Wow, Good look at the though. circle, though. Not only is Boy Boy fighting balls, but he's got Dominate coming in. All right, here we go. Going to be the stun used from balls. Flashes the wall. Dominate going to flash the chases one. Will have the knockout. Boy Boy Ooh. gets his own, and there we go. First blood comes through for Curse. Medios, the flash chains from high. The silence on the Quas. He does not have any summoners available. Ignite comes through, and the counter kill for Cloud9. But so, Curse, now go for Dragon. Talking about mirroring strategies, both teams go for the gank onto the solo laner. And both teams are successful in their gank. After the gank, both teams try and convert into the objective that is closest to them. Dragon will be traded. Oh, actually, it's a dragon and a defense of a top turret. So they don't trade the global objective. They actually just get to defend and take that huge wave that was up top. Wow, Interesting. so very. Cloud9 actually, though, they are the team in the lead, of course, because despite that dragon, they're up a tier two turret. So it's a small 200 gold lead for these guys. Quas actually had just used his teleport and it basically did nothing for him there. So not the ideal situation for that poor Mundo top lane. Let's see what else happens to him, though. Medial's looking for a bit of a flank around the map. He knows general timers of buffs. Ward comes down. No sw sweepers are actually almost up for C9. They can sweep away the ward in just a second. That covers this golem. Trying to steal away the blue and pressure mid at the same time so they don't get collapsed on. But they've only got a few seconds here. Curse are trying to get into position to defend it. And Quas actually takes a bunch of damage. That is trying not to do just that. What he wanted. One hit to go. The shield comes in. Midas repels. Comes back down. Exhaust comes in. The save from Bunny Foo Foo. And the kill goes over. Heal baits. Exhaust baits. Very frustrating, but oh so commonplace. And you have to be careful about overextending like that. Midas goes too deep. Trying to get that classic blue buff steal that has been Cloud9's go-to strategy. They wanted the repeat take, but five men to four inside Curse territory, unsuccessful, and they weren't able to get anything out of it. Not only did they not steal blue buff, but the wave from Balls was actually just a slow push, not shoving it into the turret. So Boy Boy will be able to clean that up as well. Wow, so Curse really doing a great job this early game. Tied in gold, up in kills. And the early buys are coming through. Looks like more gold will come their way. As you talk about, Voivoi Boy will be able to hold that lane. Elimination Bunny people just trading blows back and forth. Frostfang is giving him some extra gold. They kind of like help each other out. It's like, hey, you know, we get no gold normally yeah. in supports. Can we just trade some attacks real quick? And then Elimination doesn't share. He just hits them for free. Scumbag. He gets his money off of the AD, though. Bunny Fufus. Got his hands in Sneaky's pockets. Yeah, Sneaky, Sneaky felt bad for his now. teammate and was like, don't worry, I got you, Bunny. Plus, Bunny's got that blue buff that they were able to uh, defend. Mm, true. Let's see, there's a big wave up top that's pushing for Curse, but they are making no move to do anything with it. And again, a solo laner soaking up that farm is exactly what Cloud9 want. They're funneling as much as they can onto Jax. Jax moves from down bottom giant wave to up top giant wave. They want to try and focus as much money into him as they possibly can. It also forces Quas to overextend, and he's now a summonerless Mundo, uh, going with the teleport and heal. He does not have any sort of escape summoner. Heal's gonna come up pretty quickly though, Tell and seconds, because yeah. he doesn't, because he is so vulnerable, that's why they're having. Uh, dominate actually back up his push into the turret. They want to get that push all the way to the turret so it doesn't freeze, and Dominate comes up just to assist him with that. Yeah, so we're going to see Quas make his way back around the map, though. Very vigorous champion, three ruby crystals. Whoa, look at this deep in bait. Yeah, Cloud9 actually forward. catch Curse going for that red counter. Well, Quasta with the region going to put the the hurt down on Elimination. Voiba still chasing down as well. C9 pushed fully out of their jungle and Curse make the move. The smite comes through. That is a red buff taken. I will dominate with Riggles.
starting out pretty well in this game. Red buff taken for a Jax free farm and a LeBlanc free farm. Mm -hmm. So Jax got a large wave up top and High has been able to uh, shove down bottom. So he's going to be at the turret and that means there will be no pressure on this mid turret, especially since this time around, as we said, Cloud9 have the Graves, great wave clear. And it's a teleport required to be used by Kwasa to get himself there. That just came up from cool. I know it's Voivoi Boy Boy trying to defend this one, but Fall's showing up, actually. The knockup comes through under the turret. The damage, the ignite, it's gonna be enough. That makes it happen there. Cloud9 making the full rotation. So I got the colors wrong. C9 just got there, and Curse wasn't even able to respond properly. So I, remember, I kept saying, watch out for what each team does with these giant waves that they can build up in the side lanes. Curse were not able to do anything. Well, actually, Curse were able to get the red buff out of theirs. Yeah. Cloud9, they get the kill and the turret out of their giant wave. So better play there from Cloud9. They get more out of that giant wave. But they also had to use the teleport to make it happen. Ball's actually teleporting under the enemy turret. So it will be a long cooldown. Well, now the mid lane under a bit of siege as well. Quas teleport is back up just now. His summoner heal as well. If he wants to show up, he can. Cloud9 don't want to keep pressing this one. They do got a five minute window of teleport disadvantage. We have so many shots of uh, solo laners cleaning up giant minion waves. Yasiel is pretty fun to watch though, at least. Yeah, he's very more, active. He's more active with his, yeah, with his wave clear. And it requires the most effort of all of them. High hit four buttons. It's also important to note that, you know, we always talk about Jax. Oh, yeah, he needs to get up to his items, or he's got to get that blade and the Trinity Force. Yeah. Same thing with Yasuo. He has to get a Shiv and an Infinity Edge. That's a huge power spike for him. Now that he just got Infinity Edge after that last wave clear, he's got so much more power. Or, excuse me, the Shiv. He doesn't have the Infinity Edge. Nah. That'd be ridiculously early. It would. 12 minute IE Shiv, dude. I would, if I could get that every game, I would lose so many less games. Just, I, I could start out with one. That yeah. would be great. But I just have I feel 70 like I'd marks. Win a lot of games that way. <laughs> if I were broken and overpowered. All right, next dragon fight though. Uh, let's see how it stacks up this time. Because once again, Curse, they've got the team fight team here. It's it's going to be all about the poke from Cloud9, and they're actually happy to shoot skill shots into this dragon pit area. Let's see if Curse can actually get that AOE knock up. Down to one quarter high, Bunny. getting big damage, gets exhausted though. The engage comes in. Wow, the flash from the mage keeps himself alive. And the counter kill comes in. Balls finds one. Boy Boy's gonna have to run towards the back line. Quas is bloodthirsty, lands the cleaver, but he gets killed back. Double kill here for Balls on Jax. Team Curse were not able to get the combo they want. As I said, Cloud9 are so good about spreading out against AOE teams. And they cut off Bunny Foo Foo completely, so they don't get the Lulu ultimate to get an AoE knockup. He has to use it on himself. High right here, there it is. The burst on the Bunny, completely silenced. He's out of this match. They also get the exhaust out of him. Dominate, there it is. He uses the, uh, the knock aside from his ultimate to actually trigger Boy Boy's ulti, but they don't get the combo on the Lemon. They don't ki kill him until it's Quas sacrificing his life for one. So that's their main solo tank in exchange for the support of Cloud9. So now Cloud9 up two turrets. They're up this dragon. And they have about 3,000 gold overall, I gotta say. Cloud9, and once again, a team fight happened and it went C9's way. That is just the standard story for this team there. I will dominate doing his best to keep scaling up. Second time on Sinjao, same build once again. Very magic pen focused, or uh, sorry, magic resist focused with the Hex Trinker. But on the other side, Meteos changing his build up again. He's going Glacial Shroud against a very AD heavy team. Yeah, changing his build due to the resistance type that is favorable. Um, he does not need that magic resist aura this time around, as you said. I don't know, Bunny Foo Foo. A lot of uh, menacing. A lot of attack damage. So he's still going cooldown reduction route, though. This to be fair, very similar idea behind the build. Just changing which resistance type. Yeah. And it will be just as effective. Yeah, High is also going for an arm guard. You're seeing this kind of pan out among everybody. Anything for Lemonation, he didn't buy a Sight Stone yet. He rushed Mikhail's Crucible to add some more healing, to add the CC reduction to a teammate, which means that they're all buying their wards manually. On top of the fact they've already got two sweepers, so there's less... It, all the wards cost gold right now for C9. Yeah, early Mikhail's is always a great buy against teamfight teams that are looking for those combos. It's definitely highly prized against things like Leona, but this team as well. 
Uh, he's definitely relying on that heal. Did he have it in that last team fight? Is that what kept him alive? I don't. It's on Clement. He must have used it. Yeah. That could have been the difference then. That was uh, Lemon actually surviving and Quas getting the the last cleaver, costing him it, his life as well. Yeah, made him fit one for one, so. Three health crystals this time. Yeah. Does he always start with three or is it usually two? It's normally two, but I think he just <laughs> had 400 gold the time he went back to base before. He'll eventually use it, just might take some time. Maybe the push forward looks like mid lane turret is going to be pretty well defended by Curse right here. The game right now is about rotations because with Dragon off the table, it's either you make the move in and you sneak in for a buff steal or you get yeah. to your opponent's turret before they realize you're there. The thing is, this is pretty much the same story as last game. It's just happening happening earlier. Last time, Curse actually won the first fight around Dragon. Mm -hmm. And Cloud9 were in a bit of a hole. But this time, they actually won the first fight. Oh, there's the engaged Lemonation going to get knocked oh, into the air. The Mikhail's not doing too much to him. Down he goes. Cop finds the kill. I will dominate. Gets a shield. Oh, but man. the answer back from Sneaky. Collateral damage. The stun going to land the Bunny Fufu. Another kill picked up. Balls finds his third of the game. Curse going a little deep for that kill mid. Even though Lemon did not have his flash this time around. Mikhail's lives long enough to get into turret range. And Sneaky capitalizes. Now he's got double buff. Very, very happy AD carry. And has a very happy Graves. He's going to be 1-0-2, though. Unfortunately, still more assists than kills. But let's check out that replay. Yeah, a little bit too deep here. It was mostly dominates damage. Kopp is able to get the culling onto him. But Mikhail's, again, it gets him long enough life. That Mikhail's cost two tower hits onto Shin Tzu. And it was the main reason that Sneaky was able to finish it. Everyone else was coming in anyway. So they would probably be able to collapse on him. I think Dominant actually overstayed after the knockup. I think he should have anticipated the damage a bit better. Uh, I feel like, because Cops only got the killing blow, he did the damage yeah. in the end of that one. So. He really, really wanted yeah. that kill. And that, that's kind of the curse motto. They really do go hard. It's curse or die. And they kind of play <laughs> that way every game. Sometimes it's curse and die. That's true. Well, unfortunately, that's happened six times this game. How much do you think they curse when they die? Got another sneaky lemon uh, lemon rotation here. I like the ward coverage from Cloud9. Uh, backing up the split push jacks. We said how strong this is. He's got his blade now. He wants to always be split pushing. He's level 11 versus Quas's 9. Yeah, he's got a pretty healthy lead here, and his teleport is available. So he can be anywhere that he wants to be on the map. Only things that can stop him from teleporting are Boy, boy, if he gets his charges up really early, or Bunny Fufu being close, maybe Dominate would sacrifice his life. Yeah, I wonder. It's, it's going to be difficult. There's no real mage here to, to break through all the things that Jax normally does in a fight. We'll have to see what Curse does in response. Medios gets a shield, puts a ward down for it. Cloud9, though, they're getting the ward coverage over the bottom side jungle. That could set up either the siege or the rotation around bottom and mid. Maybe just the red buff. Double buff Sneaky can very well hold this mid. And look at the ward coverage. Anytime you see a Cloud9 game get to this point, it's very, very likely that they will close it out soon. Wards on both sides of the jungle. They get to make whatever moves they want. They have that sort of map hack. They can make every decision correctly because they can see every single move that Curse are trying to make. Right now, the bottom turret curse forced wide around on the rotation. High goes in for a bit of pain, gets a silence out of the void, but actually, Medeus is going for the dive here, but Curse is there to make the rotation. High pops Zonius. Can he get away? Looks like, yes, Lemonation forced a flash away. Cop on the chase. High over the wall, keeps him safe. Culling will not quite get it, but Lemonation goes down. The engage still coming through. Sneaky is going to have to dash over the wall. Flash for that one. Void boy gets the knockup. He finds him. Double kill. Three overall for Curse. Cloud9 just. Purely overextend right there. Yeah. They go for a tower dive with four people. High has no backup. He was actually able to escape over the wall with the distortion, but the rest of the team paid for it. Huge win for Curse. They're right back on the track now. Get the dragon on top of those kills. So High, he tries to go for this dive on Boy Boy, but the rest of Curse come right around the corner immediately. Dominate trying to get the knock aside over there, and they completely catch out the rest of Cloud9. Purely, purely an overextension by Cloud9. Cop actually goes for culling here. Yeah, and he's just barely oh. behind. One step behind high. 
But the rest of the team is able to clean this up. And this is a nice shot from Boy Boy. He wards to spot him. Immediately nice. warding. Sneaky's trying to juke back and forth, but he's slowed by the red buff. So his juke means nothing. He can't get... Uh, he can't walk as far as the width of the knockup from Boy Boy. So there's nowhere for him to go. They're very, very well played. Boy Boy 3, 1, and 3 this game. Didn't have the best Yasuo performance yesterday, but today he's playing absolutely great. I gotta say, Curse, even if they do lose this game, are playing some great League of Legends today. And they can go into that third place match with their head held high, but even still, they can, of course, win this one. And that's the goal right here. I see Cop gonna wave clear for now, Curse. Gonna do everything they can to get this one in, bring it to game three. They're up a kill. Down two turrets. They've not had really any seed success in a while. Yeah, I mean, they want to split push and they want to pick people off. Uh, they don't want to tower dive with LeBlanc leading the charge. Let's see. They can hold on to their own blue buff. I'm really excited to see what balls will do because, my goodness, that is a fed jax. And every time we've seen a fed jax, they've been a problem for the other team. Yeah. Well, in the post game of their win against the Guntas, Dominant did say, yeah, we know how to play around Jax. It wasn't that big of a deal for us. We'll see if this is the case here. Curse did beat Diggs Jax in game three, so they've done it before. High with a first item, um, Zanya's as well. Yeah. So next time he goes with an extremely dangerous deep maneuver, he will be able to have some other options available to him. If he gets enough cooldown reduction with that blue buff, and then maybe buying a blue elixir, uh, you can have multiple escapes. The mind games that you get to play with LeBlanc when you have a Zanyas are pretty fun to watch. We'll see how well he can use his double distorts. Distortations. Distortions? Distortions. I wanted to make it too fancy. Distortations. He has a PhD in distortions. There we go. That's how you graduate LeBlanc skill or school. Oh, God. Balls has the Trinity <laughs> Force plus Blade combo now. There we and go. they're just going to group with him. They want to use that power uh, right now. All right. For Curse's sake, though, they've got a good wave up top. Quas is shoving that into the top turret. They want to buy him as much time as possible. It's going to be very hard for them to buy that time, though. This turret will obviously go down. The question is, how quickly can Cloud9 force something at uh, an inhibitor turret? Well, there's no wards for Quas to flank from right now. He doesn't want to flank. Curse actually don't want, they don't want like, the, that the fight right anyway. now. They're kind of hoping for another dive from Cloud9, and they would much rather just gain the easy gold from that top turret. They don't want to force a fight. They'd much rather gain uh, gold from their great positioning here with Mundo. And it looks like they're doing that. He should be able to get a turret. Okay, so Cloud9 do get a tier 2 turret for a tier 1. That is still a small lead for C9, but it's just 3,000 gold right here. Cop going to wave clear mid. Just buying time, uh -oh. waiting it out. Boy Boy in a battle with Balls, but significantly losing that battle. Balls takes him out easily 1v1, but now going to jump down by Dominate. Actually, Bouncer number two. Not going to get chased. Mid lane tier two turret goes down. All right, so Cloud9 now have a pretty easy route on both of these turrets. Jax still strong enough after taking down Boy Boy to again pressure bottom. But the death timers are very, very low. Only 23 minutes into the game here. Boy Boy will come back up quickly, and Balls is extending. Uh oh, this might be too much for him. He's gonna go down, shut down gold. 500. Goes to I Will Dominate. He does have Feral Flare. Knock him, stops the distortion from high. Has to go around it. Getting chased down now. Quas trying, putting the slows in distortion use. So many heal pops as well. I Will Dominate and in the big chase. knockout point. Not gonna land. The big hits around on Lemonation Falls. Now Sneaky is exhausted, also has nowhere to go. Curse. Find another three kills, and Baron's on the map. Yeah, Baron is on the map, but they also have a good wave up top. They can easily go for this Baron. The only thing they have to worry about is a steal from Meteos. Meteos is the one member of Cloud9 at full health, and he does have the ability to steal Baron. Elise still very strong with her execute, even though the damage was taken down a little bit. It's a very real possibility, although dangerous. Now, how reminiscent is this series? Actually, hold on, balls. Uh -oh. Around oh the side. Oh god, this could be a massacre. Two versus five. Baron very low on health. Balls getting ready to go for this one. The smite might come down in time for Dominate. He's gonna pick it up, but here comes the fight. Balls, he's trying to run away now. Boy boy, one Q from the knockup. Not gonna chase. Bunny Foo Foo polymorphs Medios. There's no threat of the steal. Great job by Team Curse securing the Baron there. 
That was awesome. Yeah, even though you can smite through Polymorph, you can't flash or repel. Yeah, he's, there's no way for him range. to get in range. Yeah. That's the whole point of uh, the zoning there. Bunny pulling his weight, even being forced onto Lulu. Great stuff in this one. Now, how, how similar is this series to CLG versus TSM? CLG won game one, pretty straightforward. Game two, come back from TSM, right? And kind of control it out there. What, what, this, is this the road for Curse right here? This, they're making a great comeback. I mean, first it was a dive from Cloud9, and they punished high for it. Very good punish from Curse. They followed up very quickly. And then it was balls overextending just a split second and a great move from Dominate to go down there and kill him. Once they take Jax off the field, it was a great uh, job for them to snowball that into a Baron pickup. But still, they're fighting a fed Jax. Just because you killed him, you didn't take away any of his power. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't lose gold for dying in League of Legends. You lose time, and time equals money. We've learned this. So indirectly, you lose gold. Ha! True. Very I don't even know why I went for that it's one. True. It's true. <laughs> I will support your argument oh, there. Right, I appreciate that. <laughs> Teamwork, yes! It's OP in the caster desk as well as League of Legends. Cloud9 gonna hold the wave clear for now. Curse do have two and a half minutes left of their Baron buff. And I wanna know what they do. Do they actually build themselves a gold lead with that? They're down 2k right now. Or do they feel like they're actually the leading team because they're, they're up three kills. They just got a Baron like... I actually wonder what the calculation is so like. So yeah, that's an interesting aspect to the game. When you're in game, you see the scoreboard and you you are not 100% sure how much extra global gold Cloud9 have, but you know the turret count. So they're definitely feeling like they at least have the momentum here and they're the ones with the team fight, so they're forcing it. The wind ball comes out from Void Boy and Curse pushing this down. Bunny Fufu dropped low, but does force the disengage away from high. These minions go down as well, Curse. Still he's, looking a bit yeah, aggressive. Yeah, Bunny's down, but he's not out. That's the key. He needs to at least be able to get his ulti off on someone. However, he's primed for the next rotation of high spells. If he gets another burst combo off, that will be a dead support. Here comes the calling. Here comes the push in. Medios takes some damage there with the cleavers as well. Here comes the burst oh, again. Boy, boy, the ulti comes in in Ooh. time. He lives through the ignite. And now the engage comes through. This is not necessarily great. It's going to be a one for one trade so far. Mid laner for top laner. Curse on the disengage. Slow comes in. High comes back. Finds a second. Curse now on the retreat. Quash about to get locked up. High will survive. Another one for Cloud9. Curse are routed. High, the predator on the outside gets a huge burst onto Bunny, then waits his time in the shadows. Strikes again. Gets another huge burst onto Voiboy. He's just destroying Curse from the back there. They had no protection on their rear. It was all high, attacking them from behind, cutting off their uh, their squishy champions. And then the rest of Cloud9 are able to suck in Curse's front line. Great job by Cloud9 actually destroying Curse from the backside. So this is actually the second job from high. First burst was on Bunny. Bunny, by the way, good ulti to save Void Boy. That would have been a dead Yasuo. And he then goes right back in because Dominate calls for the engage at the turret. And even though they do get down the jacks, they're at the turret, they're taking turret hits. I don't know if the communication was there for Curse. Were they calling out, hey, High is killing us in the back lines here. Dominate's going full steam ahead. Seems like a little bit of a disconnect between the front and the back of the Curse squad. And Balls lived long enough to make a lot of these kills happen. Curse lost so much health. From the dive onto that top lane, even though he started out with double offensive items, Ruin King Trinity Force, he was durable enough to make it work. High starting to be even more annoying. Zonia's Void Staff the build for himself, so no CDR in his items, but enough damage and durability to get the job done, obviously. 2 0 4 on him, sneaky 1 2 and 5. The assist AD carry, he can't shake the moniker. Yeah, speaking of cooldown reduction, I mean, uh, Meteos this time around going full tank build. After the Frozen Heart that we talked about with the Glacial Shroud early, he's going pure armor stacking with the health. Not really worried about that slow burn from Mundo. Yeah. Or I, supporting uh, Lulu. I do really like the choice of Frozen Heart, though. There's three attack speed champions on Curse. Dominate, Void, Cop, all of them yeah. scale, scale very much on attack speed. Also, even though Void Boy does get the armor penetration after the ulti, um, the attack speed aura affects everybody whether attacking him or not. So that plus Randuin's is going to be very strong. And I, 
I like how Balls is also building into his Randuins. The, the itemization here is definitely clear for Cloud9 this time around. In time, you focus a lot of your damage and of your team comp one way. The end game gets kind of hard. But then it's balanced out by penetration items. We'll see when the Last Whispers come through. The core build done for Voidboy now. The Eye Edge did come in. Last Whisper done for a cop as well, but he's pretty much on par with the enemy with the enemy tank line. So we'll see just how much of an uh, impact cop can have this game. Voidboy killing the minions very successfully, dashing while doing so. All right, so we got a minute on Dragon and a minute on Baron. Not much ward coverage for either team by either of those objectives. High trying to take advantage of that lack of vision. Attacking from the Fog of War once again, however unsuccessful. Cloud9 have been unsuccessful with their split pushing attempts, by the way. Yeah, true. Also like CLG versus TSM. Balls and Quas gonna face off two level leads still. Balls completely like held that sort of advantage here. Normally with Balls, he plays like, he does split push some, but he teleports in all the time. Mm -hmm. But he's normally like this lane bully player, right? Picks Renekton whenever available. But so, now he's playing a late game scaler and well, crushing it. Yeah, what the plan is for him, he just wants to stay around bottom long enough for Baron to come back up. Then, as long as he can get threat on the bottom side, then he can force Curse to actually make the decision. And Cloud9 will try and outplay Curse, uh, forcing them to make the decision between going to Baron or dealing with the bottom lane, Giant Wave, and split pushing Jax. First, they're going to take Dragon off the map. Since they're spawning at the same time, I like this move. They get the extra global gold. Make sure that if they mess this split push up in the future, then Curse won't have as much to claim on the map, even if they do win the team fight. So they're, they're reducing their risk right here, taking Dragon off, and then they'll probably go for the split push. But that would backfire if Curse actually make the first move. They're trying to get the vision on Baron, and it's going to be... Uh, Cloud9 with a couple more. Well, I guess they're just going to set up the same plan anyway. Right, Jax will we'll split push bot, and they'll try and clear out that vision. They've got a lot of work ahead of there, though. They do. There's a they're, lot of vision here. They have two pink wards to kill and a plethora of green wards. Uh-oh, Dominic going to get silenced, rooted up. Does not have much to do. Burst comes through from high, gets locked up a little bit, but goes back to the distortion. It's going to be okay. Ball's now level 18. Maxed out in the bottom lane, three levels above Quas. Gigantic threat, big spike for this Jack. He's gonna keep going up, of course. Sweeper's starting to be used. Cloud9 gonna find three of these wards. Uh -huh. Both of those solos down bottom, by the way, have their teleports ready. Balls can interrupt Quas, but Quas cannot interrupt Balls. Because they both have teleports, they're actually just making the call to force Baron. No vision for Curse. It's so dangerous for them to face check at any point. They've got to be wary. That word didn't hit the brush. Didn't matter too much, though. Cloud9 on a bit of a flank, actually. Here comes the engage. Oh. The teleport comes in. That's going to force C9 back. Balls goes the long way around, gets jumped on for it. This could be the battle that Cloud9 wants. Maybe it's the one that Curse wants, the knockback from Dominate. Balls still taking damage. Windwall comes through. C9 jumps back over to keep themselves safe. Dominate staying in the mix. The disengage. The damage comes through from Yasuo. Balls, the second dodge comes through, but that's a kill for Cop. The battle's still going on. Quas in the front lines. One for one. Sneaky will go down. Meteor's running around, but more kills come through. Quas just melting everybody. Lemonation also, maybe, will go oh! down. The Dominate. Meteor's will trade back, though. Two versus two left on the map. Three down for each team. That was a really well-played fight by Curse. They did not take the Cloud9 bait, even after failing the ward into the bush. They just try and shove up mid instead. And they force the speed buff out of Cloud9, use it as an, in, as an engage, and they had minions in the middle here for Mundo to teleport on. So this is perfect for them. Once again, they've got this ridiculously buff tank. Now watch balls. Everything from Curse is focused on to balls. Medios, by the way, missed his cocoon in the top right there on Bunny Fufu. -Foo. Um, so everything's burned on balls. They use exhaust, they use summer spells, they use everything that they possibly can to get him down low. Meanwhile, Quas is at full this whole time. There's nothing they can do to dent him even. And Bunny was able to live long enough. He gets enough, another great ult. Dominate chases Lemonation up to the top and able to finish him. Wow, Meteos actually goes deep and takes down Lulu. Let's look at this one this one. Another Miss Cocoon. That's two Miss Cocoons for Meteos during that fight. Very well played overall there. So, gotta say, Curse keep themselves as close as they can to this one, but they are down about 6,000 gold. The team is regrouped to the mid lane that was high, holds the top lane. 
Choo-Choo Turret is down, but the inhibitor might just be the call. Boy Boy, ooh, the Cocoon just saves that one. There's the Wind Wall. His knockup's there. Doesn't go for it. They got his shield down, but man, Balls has to teleport in very quickly. There they go, and the... TP comes in, Quas in the front lines dominate. Big knockback comes through, and they find the kill on the cop, though. This could be the fight. Balls in the back line, finding everybody. Three kills for C9. Make that four. It's only Quas alive versus five in Cloud9. Take down everybody. A quadra kill for Balls. Yeah, this time they did not have an exhaust for that super fed Jax. And Balls coming in a little bit later. Doesn't matter. He's able to teleport right in and clean up. That should be Cloud9 getting at least an inhibitor. And 25 seconds, it might even be the game if they can take it out for long enough. We'll just have to see for this one. Yeah, you're right, it's probably just the inhib, but see where it goes. Baron also on the map. They chose not to go for that just yet. Inhib is going down. They're lurking oh, forward. Oh, this is dangerous. If they do get stopped here, then it would be a retaliation Baron. But they're going so quickly. They might get it in time. And hit number two, turret number two going down onto the Nexus. Cloud9 gonna take it 2-0 into the finals. Great call right there to end the game. Yep. That was pretty close. They had maybe another five seconds though. The minion wave was coming in still. They knew it was gonna be there. They could backdoor the inhib and ride the minions in for the Nexus. Cloud9. A close series. This game, 14 to 18 in kills. Curse definitely made him work for it. But Cloud9, they were the favorites coming in. The number one seed. Another two wins in a row. They haven't lost the game in a couple of months now. They are definitely a strong team. And their greatest strength is their ability to adapt to the new changes in the game. It seems like as soon as the patch comes out, even sometimes before the patch comes out, yeah. they're already practicing these strategies that will work with the new changes. And a lot of that has to do with their love of solo queue. I feel like they try out so many things in solo queue, and they're not afraid to take things from people